Before we begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member, and you will get access to weekly Q&As and the exclusive CoffeeCast podcast, where we'll answer those questions. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. There. Hello. That sounded weird. How is everybody doing? I'm doing well. Um, What is today about? Well, today is about, let's say, you've been doing your strong lifts or starting strength 5x5 five five for a while now. And for a while, I mean over a year. Maybe, maybe a little bit just under a year. You're kind of like, eh. Yeah, I am progressing, but not as much as I want to, and I'm getting getting kind of bored with it. So, okay, what do you do then? Are you going to suck it up and continue training because you are progressing? Or maybe you stop progressing even though your sleep is in order, your caloric intake is in order, your choices of food are in order, and your stress outside of work or whatever is in order. You might need to change it up a bit with different volume, workload, and or periodization. Now, whoa, got an ad. Cha-ching. Yeah, man. Pay my groceries, people. Pay my groceries. Now, you know I care too much about that alone. I'm always worried sick, like with the um, the monthly consult course by the way which has one spot left the monthly consultation course has one spot left so there's a private discord and i was losing my mind like not in the discord but like losing my mind that not uh, as soon as somebody got in or as somebody paid for it like didn't immediately go on the discord and like put their whole life story on there like this is what i want with trending i'm like oh you paid me for it let me help you it's like oh it's not always how that works. <laughs> Didn't Ryan once say that? Like, uh, X amount of people bought his book and, like, less than half finished it, something like that. It's like, oh, okay. But the people who are in the monthly consultation course, and I will be very honest about that, weight is being lost. There is also some weight being gained. Strength is being gained. Exercises are being performed properly. And people are making overall progress. So I'm very proud of the people in there. And if you want to be one of the members, you can go here. Go there. Because I have a spot for you. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. When you are thus running or walking up against the wall. Yeah, running against the wall. I'm sorry. Bashing up against the wall. And you don't have, let's say, the money for a coach or the knowledge of a coach to make your own program. There is a solution. And it's called 531 by Jim Wendler. And it looks like this. Share screen. Do, 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 do. Delete all the porn. <laughs> Here it is. It's an old T Nation article. That's how I found it. Because I did 5x5 five five and I was like, you know what? I want to progress. Jiko with the T Rex. Rex and be flexing. John Watts with the T Rex. Look at all them Rexes. I was doing 5x5 five five and I was kind of in that position where it's like, yeah, I'm not plateauing, but if I keep doing this, I am going to plateau. So what's what's next? What is the progression of 5x5? Five five? And this popped up. So this is how it looks like. By the numbers in 531. Oh, before we uh, dive into it, my apologies. This is about the same lifts as starting strength or strong lifts is. Although this does not concern the bend over row. Can I get an amen? Because people who know me know what I think of the bend over row. 
Um, this is also not applied to pull-ups, um, dips, arm work, whatever. But I'll get into that. I'll get into that. So, okay. This is mostly focused on, depending on what you want, either the squat, bench, or and deadlift, and deadlift, or squat, bench, deadlift, and shoulder press. But depends on if you want to go three days or four. So, okay, by the numbers. In 5-3-1, you're expected to train three or four days a week. Each workout is centered around one core lift, the parallel squat, bench press, deadlift, and standing shoulder press. Now, he says standing here because some people do it seated. Don't. Each training cycle lasts four weeks with these set rep goals for each major lift. We went into that last week about the deload week. This is where I got it from. Week one, three sets of five. Week two, three sets of three. Week three is three sets, one of which being five, one of which being three, and the other one being one. And week four is the deload. Now, here we go. Then you start the next cycle. So it's a four-week program and continuing on. Uh, blop, using heavier weights on the core lifts. And that's where a seemingly simple system starts getting a little more complicated. I'll hold your hand through this. You aren't just picking a weight to lift five times or three times or one time per set. No, 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 no. You're using a specific percentage of your one rep max, not your full one rep max. The calculations are based on 90% of it. <clears throat> so, oh, he explains it here. So if your one rep, men, one rep max in the bench press is 315 pounds, you use 285. 90% as the base number for your training weight calculations. So what you do is you take the actual 100%, you take 90% of that, and that will become your new 100%. That is the 100% you calculate these numbers on. Here we go. So set one is 65% of that new 100% times five, Set two is 75%. Set three is five reps plus. And this is where I kind of messed up the first time I did this program because, because I thought was, oh, the last set is only five reps done. No, 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 my friend. The last set is an AMRAP, A-M-R-A-P, which means as many reps as possible. So the last set is a minimum of five, and then you just keep going until your form collapses. Not literally, but until your form is just not good enough anymore. And this is why he does the 90%. Oh, why should I aim 10% lower? First of all, for room to grow. Room to grow. Because if you take the full 100%, you're going to start out sub-maximally. And if you start out sub-maximally, you're going to hit a plateau sooner. So if you take 90% of the 100%, you're going to have room to progress. Week two, 70% times three, 80% of that new 100% times three, and 90% of that new 100 times three. Week three, 75 times five, which is lucky, by the way, because you had that on week one. 85% times three, which you are lucky because that was the last one you had in week one. And then 95%, at least one, but then you're going to M wrap it as many reps as possible. And then week four is the deload where 40% times five, 50% times five, and 60% times five. These are sets, I believe. Mm. Sorry, three sets, 140, 150, 160. My bad. When you see five plus, three plus, or one plus, 
That means you do the max reps you can manage with that weight, with the goal of setting a rep record each workout. Let's walk through week one workout for bench press. Using the example above, if your one rep max is 315. Powerlifters, everybody. You calculate all your percentages from 90% of that max or 285 pounds. So you're using 185, 65% of 285 times 5, 215 times 5, and 240 pounds or 245 times five or more. This is, by the way, a great schedule to have those micro plates in because with the percentages and all that, you're going to have certain decimals where you're kind of like, how the hell am I going to do this in plates? And I only have like two and a half pound plates. But if you have micro plates, by the way, John Watts, drink. I said it, micro plates. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are getting old. <laughs> don't worry. I'm holding your hand through it. You don't have to worry. I will help you out on this. Um, Let's see. Sloth. I already saw you, Sloth, but I don't remember if I said it. <laughs> you know what can... You know what can... Uh, F up a lion? A sloth. Although... There's a very distressing video of a mountain lion and a sloth on YouTube. I don't recommend it. I don't. Absolutely not. So, okay. Um, bah, 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 bah. In Wendler's 531 ebook, he provides a detailed list of weights and percentages so you don't have to carry a calculator with you to the gym. I mean, everybody has his phone with him, so. After you finish the first cycle, you add five pounds to your one rep max calculations for the two upper body lifts and 10 pounds to your one rep max for the squat and deadlift. This, mm, I mean, I did it, but you take, you take the 90% one. You take the 90% one. And that's why you add five or 10 pounds. These specific instructions for one rep max percentages and monthly progressions are what set 531 apart from less useful systems. Although I, I kind of went eh on the um, increase of increments, but he's doing this per month. So instead of per workout, you're doing this per month. So there's a slower progression model. So again, this is a good program. Mm -hmm. When I see a program that says three sets of eight reps, that's the stupidest effing thing ever. <laughs> if it doesn't have a specific percentage based on a specific max, it's useless. That's the whole mark of someone who doesn't understand basic programming. Like I said, your benchmark for intensity is the percentage of the one rep max. I do that in my schedules as well. Assistance work. And this is where I like it. Along with the bench press, squat, shoulder press, and deadlift, 531 includes assistance exercises to build muscle, prevent injury, and create a balanced physique. My favorites are strength training staples like chin ups, dips, lunges, back extensions. Don't go ape feces with supplemental exercises. They should complement the training, not detract from them. This is why I hate modern bodybuilding schedules. How do I know a good trainer if he doesn't have five exercises for the same muscle group in one day? It's like, why would you do that? I've seen worse. I've seen eight or something like that. Uh, if you don't scrap it and move on, like him already, there are a number of ways to do assistance works, uh, assistant work, boring but big, my version of a hypertrophy program. The triumphant shown below and my favorite i'm doing jack shit <laughs> name for those times when you only have time to hit the pr in your key lift and leave <laughs> power lifters are a different breed of people they really are mm. and if you don't believe me go watch west side versus the world 
and you will know what I mean. Again, powerlifters were built different. They're like Russians of athletes. Imagine a Russian powerlifter. Like, oh God, run. People laugh and call me lazy when they when they twit around in their three hour working <laughs> workout making zero progress. Thank you. Sometimes instead of what you do in the weight room is what you don't do that will lead to success. Exactly. Um, let me see. I want to know, and I recommend you read up on this, by the way. Let's, ah, look, here he has a uh, example. So on workout one, so day one, he only does dips and chin-ups. Day two, good mornings, hanging leg raise. Mostly very high reps. I wouldn't for triceps. Uh, since they're a uh, fast twitch muscle fiber, I wouldn't go that high. But I details, details. I hope you get the gist of it. What he does here is that he uses the assistance exercises for a higher workload. So your main lift is the heaviest, the most intense, and everything after that is just, as he said, assistance work. Deadlift, after that, good mornings, hanging leg raises, some ab work, I don't know why, but bench press, eh, here he does dumbbell chest press and dumbbell row. My heart weeps. Uh, I wouldn't do dumbbell chest presses on the same day I have my main bench. I do that on the um, deadlift, I guess. But that's what I like to do. I don't do full body. What I do is, so I have my main squat, and after that, I do assistance bench, bench um, pull-ups, and or dips. That's what I do, full body. Workout four, here we go, squat, and he then tends to do leg presses as assistance and there. So the main takeaway of this schedule is do your main lifts via the 531 method. And after that, you do assistant work. And that's kind of it. You can do that three times a week. You can do that four times a week. Uh, if you need some detailed help, my DMs are open and stuff like that. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> About in the chat. Hey, everyone, still busy. Oh, that's bad to hear, Jiko. But keep it up. Today should have been a workout day, but low back said no. Well, your chest isn't your low back, Jiko. I'm, I'm not, like, I'm not, um, I'm not considering the, um, let me rephrase that. I am considering the seriousness of the situation. What I'm trying to say is just because one part of your body hurts doesn't mean you can't train anything that isn't related to it. Going back to that uh, example I gave a couple of whenever ago, a uh, guy broke his toe and he's like, I can't train. Is your toe on your arms? It isn't. Well then. Uh -huh. Bull Rush, what did you do? Hey, there he is. Hello, Horden Jarbringer. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Green Leader, standing by. Tomorrow, heavy things shall be lifted. On the days you're hurting, you should be stretching or swimming. Not enough people swim. Yeah, I heard about swimming. I mean, why not? I mean, why not? Go for a swim. I'm saying is depending on where you're hurting, you can still train something else because instead of focusing on what you can't do, keep focusing on what you can do. And I know that sounds very positive and um, uh, whatever that is, motivational, but it's true. Uh, Stuart McGill is a great advocate of that as well. Uh, he treated a lot of people with lower back pain. And his take on it was, instead of focusing on that you can't do anything, we're going to figure out what you can do. 
and we're going to work from there. And he found out that a lot of people with lower back pain were still able to do certain things, and from there on, were able to progress. Again, I'm not a physical therapist. I'm just saying that's the uh, method I hold with myself. No honesty. When I have a client, I'm very careful with that. Very. But I do always go for what can you do. I had a, I had a client once, Traddy, my Tradcon friend, broke his foot. He says it was, um, what was it? The in English, the 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 thing that comes before bruised, that's the one. He said it was bruised. I'm like, are you sure about that? Are you really sure? So what we did was, I did let him squat. He was able to squat the empty bar. I'm like, okay, good. Then we did forty kilos. I'm like, how's the pressure on the foot? He's like, still good. I'm like, uh, okay, like still good, good or like. We're still good, but he's like, no, still good. Okay, 50. It's like, still good. 60. It's like, now I'm starting to feel pressure, but it doesn't hurt. Then that's where we quit. And we move from there. And he was still able to squat. Uh, on bench, he wasn't able to put much uh, force into his feet, though. So, yeah, that was kind of, yeah. Yeah, that wasn't really uh, happening. Now, was it? <laughs> so yeah any questions on 531 by the way do you you know who i haven't seen in this chat in a while it's uh, uh danny danny arnold i haven't seen danny arnold in ages in this chat normally he pops up every now and then but i haven't seen him in a while i haven't seen him in ages here i do see him on red evening occasionally maybe he doesn't like me Spouting about on uh, training things. But who knows? Not enough people swim. Well, <laughs> there is an immigrant joke in there. There is an immigrant joke in there. I don't know if I'm allowed to make it. I don't think I am, in all honesty. Otherwise, we're going to get that again, aren't we? <laughs> it's like 7 a.m. West Coast. Oh, Danny Arnold's in the West Coast. Oh, could that be it? That could be it. Hmm. Oh, well. We do miss you, Danny. You are being missed. I haven't seen Cal, Cal Marlin in a while either. General Cal. Gico, Horden, Dante, everybody's here. Other than that, in, in all honesty, I don't have much to say about 531 anymore. Other than what I would do with the assistant movements is, let's say you have squat, so your main squat day. After that, I would just do assistant shoulder work, pull-ups, and dips. Maybe not even dips on the same day as pull-ups. Let's say you have a Tuesday, that is your bench day. After that, I would do, depending on what you did, the... Um, deadlift assistance or the dips and pull-ups after that you'd have your main deadlift day i would do some bench assistance something like that and then you get your shoulder day and i would do the leg assistance and some arm work and that's it i i really don't do much arm work in all honesty but like i said Pull-ups and dips is all you need. But I need a dipping rack for that. Skipping today doesn't hurt my progress at all. If it still hurts tomorrow, then I'm going to do something else. Okay, that's a good that's a good mentality to have, Chico. And you're right, skipping a workout every now and then doesn't affect the progress in the long run. Just saying, be careful it doesn't. Be careful it doesn't do it in the long run. That's all I'm saying. Other than that, how are things going here? Uh, got a new modem. I haven't had internet troubles for the entire 25 minutes. Thank God I haven't had that, which I'm very happy about. So now the stream is going fluently, finally. 
So I'm happy about that. Um, Ryan is coming on on Thursday. And unlike somebody else, I won't be late for Ryan. <laughs> ah, oh, well. And we're going to talk about the end game. I found a great post by uh, Uncle Vaz. It's about the end game. And we're going to talk about that. Instead of be like me, it works for me. Send a copy of your modem specs to Chesty. No, I won't. <laughs> Alpha Sloth, boundary enforcement with a bratty teenager. Isn't that like all women? The kid decided to get high instead of snowboarding. Ooh. Trying not to be butt hurt about it, but also to want to encourage her behavior. I mean, is disciplining a child butthurt? Oh, got high and hang with friends. It doesn't make it any better, Sloth. It's like, yeah. Boundary enforcement with a bratty teenager. I mean, acta non verba. Well, okay. Like, next time you go snowboarding, don't ask her. And if she's going to be like, why didn't you ask me, Uncle Sloth? Well... Guess you'd rather hang out with your friends and get high. You, I mean, I, I don't think this is your kid, your actual kid. Not sure about that. But that's the parent's job. Like, parenting is the parent's job, not yours. The only thing you can do is, well, acta non verba with boundary enforcement. What do we always say? Attention is the coin of the realm. That works with family members as well. Attention is the coin of the realm. Yeah, about what I figured. Yeah, like I said, th that's kind of what I would do. Again, not financial advice or anything. I'm not a psychologist. But if people misbehave towards me, I just remove my attention. Okay. And then usually they come back. It's like, oh, I haven't heard from you in a while. And then... Ah, no, no, like depends. Every now and then I make a snarky remark. Every now and then. But they kind of know why. They kind of know. Because I don't engage in discussions or anything. It's just like something is being said that I don't like. Boom. Removed. Next. And with family, of course, that is way harder. That is way... Oh... Parents are absent. She's with grandparents who are struggling. Ooh. Oh. Well, you kind of don't want them. Oh, I know what situation you're in. That's a hard one. Because you're going to be nervous as hell when you withdraw your when you withdraw your attention, where it's like, oh God, I sure to God hope this works. But it kind of reminds me of a very good friend of mine. A very good friend of mine. Who wanted to help his niece. He really wanted to help his niece. And mind you, he is very, he is a very kind person. Especially towards family. And he didn't want her to go to college, major in stupid shit. He gave her everything she needed to make the right decisions. But again, he was her uncle. He was he was not her caretaker, so to say. So doesn't matter if um, she's with grandparents or her actual parents. You're not the caretaker. So... Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Then encourage BS behavior. Well, that's the thing. Attention is the coin of the realm. So let's say she does this and you keep giving her attention, negative or positive. You're engaging. You're engaging. it. The reward is the attention, be it positive or negative. Now, that friend of mine, since he was not the caretaker, the only thing he could do was give the advice. Guess what? She majored in stupid shit. She has a college debt up to her ears. And God knows what she did in college. He's not the caretaker. 
He's not the caretaker. And that hurt him. That really hurt him. I can still see it in the, today in him. There's one fact I leave out of that story, because if I tell you that fact, you immediately know who it is. But yeah, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And I'm not saying you should like dump them or whatever. I'm, I'm not telling you to do anything, Slav. I'm only telling you what I would do. But I would be heavily disappointed. I would just be heavily disappointed. Where it's like, I don't want to engage in this conversation. I don't want to engage with you. I'm going to do my own thing. You know where to find me. And if you don't know why my behavior is like this, well, then I want to experience you putting forward the effort to find out. Because I'm not going to put effort into it. But that's me. I've done that with people. I've done it with girlfriends, for God's sake. They did something that they knew would just set me off. And I was like, no, it's it's done. It's, it's, it's done. And there's no judgment or anything. My personal conviction where it's like, no, I, I don't agree with this. It's done. Have fun. Whatever it is you want to do. But it's going to be without me. Now, that is in a relationship matter. Uh, we're talking about family. No, honestly, I have had that with my old man. Where he did certain things. Or he, he put a certain tone towards me. And I was just like, nope. And I just walked. And because we see each other very regularly, the behavior did not come up. Certain behaviors just don't come up anymore. And that sounds like training or whatever, but this is how you deal with behavior you don't like. You remove yourself. Corey Wayne used to say this. I love that quote. Even though you don't like Corey Wayne, or you might, you might. You might. What was it again? Um... People's behavior is a reflection. Oh, God, what was it again? Uh, damn it. I, I can't. You know what? People will act as shitty as you let them. There you go. Ryan Stone, coach, save my life. <laughs> but that's kind of what it is. It's like people will... People's behavior towards you is a reflection what you allow. And I'm butchering that quote, but it is true. People's behavior towards you is a reflection of what you allow. I have cut off friends about this. Banter I can do. Banter I can handle. Now, I know Ryan said, like, you need to banter a bit more with John. It's a different story with John. Cappy and I, like, we can banter. John, I'm not always sure like how the joke will land. So I'm kind of like, ah, you know what? I'll let you have it. I'll let you have it. I do like John. But I've had friends where I just knew it wasn't banter. And I just removed myself. I'm like, I don't have to take this. I don't have to take this. Bye. The thing was, they never came for an explanation. So that's all I needed to know. All I needed to know. It's like, okay, good. Good riddance. But again, that's with friends. With family, yeah. I mean, well, ooh, to put it very bluntly, to put it very bluntly, if family matters so much to them, they'll put in the effort as well. It doesn't always have to come from your side. You don't have to set yourself on fire to keep others warm. You don't. Ask me how I know. Ask me how I know. I have an aunt. Thanks, I figured I was on the right track. It's just tough sometimes to see the forest for the trees when you are in situation. Yeah, absolutely. Because, look, I am a outsider from this. This is an outside perspective. 
I have no relationship to the person you are in this situation with. So I can easily talk and be like, well, comply or goodbye, and blah, 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 blah. But you're invested. You're emotionally engaged with this person. So that makes it a lot harder. Even though you kind of know what the right thing is. That doesn't mean it's not going to suck. Because it will. It will suck. Because you will either get the cold hard truth that they don't care. Or it's going to work out. And that is a risk not everybody is willing to take. And that sucks. Like, finally realizing somebody actually doesn't care. Oh, that sucks. Uh, Some friends, colleagues have an edge to how they speak to you. And if they never follow up after prolonged silences, there's your answer. JD put it, bingo, there it is. If they never follow up after prolonged silences, there's your answer. I'm sorry, but it's true. And that holds true for a lot of people. That holds true for a lot of people. So, yeah. Um, Again, that is what I would do. I'm not telling you to do anything. This is just my perspective of the situation. I would invite you not to engage. Medium is the message, exactly. What I would invite you to do is not engage in debate on this or persuasion on this. Inform when you are being asked about it. Other than that, hands off. Let them come to you. Like you said, she was supposed to come snowboarding with you. This is your niece. Uh, she hung out with friends and got high. Fine. There's your answer. And I know that sucks. I'm sorry. No, that sucks. But, yeah. I mean, you can keep asking about it, but it's probably not going to happen. Like JD says, if they never follow up after prolonged silence, there's your answer. I'm not saying don't put in the effort, but I don't think you haven't put in effort yet, Sloth. Like you already found out what she was doing and things like that. So, yeah. Now I was on the track. I was just pissed initially. Uh, I can't imagine. But I've calmed down now and I will act accordingly in difference. Yeah, you got this. We know you do. I mean, this little space with indifference. I know. This little space and Ryan's chat and a couple of the other guys are Discord. Those are sober guys. And if they're not, we're going to hold them to it. We are going to hold you to it, people. Um, I really don't have much more to add. Uh, if I go on, it's going to be like one of those podcasts where it's like, yeah, what the hell is he talking about rambling? So I will leave you with this. Uh, I have opened an extra spot on the monthly consultation group. People have been losing weight. People have been gaining weight. People have been gaining strength. People have been performing the exercise with better form. If you want to get your strength training in order, go there. Go there. Do it. Read up on the page. Private Discord with uh, 24-7 access. I can't respond 24-7 because, well, I need to sleep too. But I will respond as fast as I can. And you get form checks. You get diet uh, schedules. Or you get a diet plan. You get a fitness schedule. You name it. You got it. Everything related to fitness. Uh, last night was a great example of holding you to it at Jack Napier. Yeah. Oh, follow up from Sunday. She needs her tonsils removed. You really weren't kidding. Oh, well, I'm glad you found the cause of it. No honesty. I'm glad you found it. I really thought you were kidding. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm glad you again. I'm glad you found the uh, origin of the problem, and let's hope for a speedy recovery. She can go and get ice cream after her tonsils are removed. And uh, speaking of ice cream, I wrote a little post about that. I wrote a little post about that. I don't know where to post it yet. Maybe Dante has some ideas. Um, but I will leave you to it. Hit the like, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below what your thoughts were of this show, please. That really helps. 
even if I'm done streaming, go refresh the page and comment down below how awesome you think this was. Um, monthly consultation group. I have a spot open and truth the mug. Truth the mug. Here it is. Look at it. It's all its shiny beauty. Don't eat paint. What is don't eat paint? Does this man think you are imbeciles? No, I do not. Do not eat paint. Like you guys need warnings. How dare he? How dare he spit on his audience? <laughs> I will see you on Thursday with Ryan. I'll see you guys soon. Cheers. Thank you, Horden. No, doctors won't do it without a medical need. Well, being able to sleep is a medical need, John. Fourth. Uh, guys, I will see you soon. Cheers. John Watts, good luck with it. Fruit. <laughs> Fruit is gay. <laughs> Hyper.